welcome. Thank you. So you have what, about 50% of your exposure is in the United States. Yes, roughly. How much of that is in office and what are you seeing right now? 20%, uh, 40% uh, in logistics and residential uh, is the rest of that. So uh, we have bet for a long time on the United States because it's, uh, it has always been the most liquid uh, and um, innovative market in real estate. What about in the office space? What, what does that look like um, right now? As I said, it's only 20% yeah. of our uh, portfolio. So, for example, in New York, we have four buildings, four towers, uh, which are full. Uh, we have played, and I think we are known for that, to have been uh, very uh, pro of diversification in our portfolio. So very early, we started to dispose of some offices and buy some multi-residential. Uh, we thought that, especially in the United States, that was a good uh, way to uh, perform, and it has been the Case. We did uh, more than 12% return last year, so I think it's uh, the illustration of the fact that this diversification pays. You also had a big deal, the, the Fox News building, a billion dollar deal, which I think surprised a lot of people in a tough environment. <laughs> How did that happen? Oh, uh, yes, that's true. You know, it's, uh, it, it was the, the, the biggest um, lease last year in Manhattan, so we're very proud of that, and, and the team has worked very hard to do it. But that's a big building, that's a good building in Midtown, and we believe that uh, this building uh, deserves deserves a long-term lease, which is, of course, uh, the job that we have to do because we are a long-term investor. So we are not here just for the year, for the next five years, but for the next 50 years because it's what the pensioners I'm working for are expecting from me. So that's why those long-term leases are exactly the name of the game in our industry. We keep hearing that the, the cultural conversation around, say, return to office is much different in Europe than it is in the United States. Is that having a material effect on, on returns or values? Uh, of course, it's, uh, it's um, I would say it's everywhere different outside uh, North America. <laughs> because I was in Brazil and Mexico just recently, people are back to the office. Europe, obviously, uh, Asia, they are more back than, uh, than they used to be there. 110% back to the <laughs> office, that's what they used to be. So uh, more than, uh, than before the pandemic. So it's really North America, which is very special. And, and of course, if you look uh, the entire market through the, the lens of San Francisco or Chicago, that that sounds very painful, but that's not the case uh, in other countries. And it's very correlated to the transportation. So I think I have a part of the solution, but infrastructure as the other part. Interesting. You mean in terms of public transit or less reliance on cars or something like that? Uh, in terms of public transit, right. there is a direct correlation uh, between the, uh, the the number of minutes people uh, spend in commute. And uh, and now, you know, what we say is that you have to earn the commute. So if you are not able to really provide the kind of properties that people are expecting right now, especially in terms of amenities, in terms of connections with the right, um, I would say, requests of the communities, then you are missing something.